All right, we're on. Hey, guys. Hi, everybody. It takes like, we're like on a 12-second twelve, 12 delay is usually what it is. Yeah. But I'm going to try to find us. <coughs> oh, there we are. Found us. Are we? Yeah. Oh. We're like on a 12. We're like 10 seconds <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to say hi, everyone. Mm. All right. So good. You should join us. Chelsea just got done eating. Without Kirk, and he's Without not happy me. about it. That's true. Man, I am so excited. Welcome into our living room. We, um, One of the things that we believe in here at New Life is cultivating community. Is my mic on? My mic is on. Is it? Are you it plugged in all the way? Is it plugged in all the way? No, sure, yes. Am I back on? Do I have the crackly one? Uh, it's in audio. Huh. Is it just not me? What if I talk into Chelsea's mic? Did it just die? Well, I don't know. I was hearing us somehow. Yeah, I was. It was just fine. Huh. Is it just not me? I can hear What if I talk into Chelsea's mic? Yep, it's working. Did it just die? <laughs> every uh, single know, week, hearing us somehow. Yeah, every know. single week, we. <laughs> yeah. Every single week, we try to do better, <laughs> better with our setup, and every week it's like just go live with the phone. It's so dumb. Hey, this is working though. We're really excited. It's working. Yeah, let's do we it. We are excited to be here. It is July first. It is our. Uh, daughter's 11th birthday. Aww. Happy birthday, Sawyer. If you haven't seen her or haven't <laughs> wished her a happy birthday, you can message or um, post something. We have posts on my uh, page and on Chelsea's. So um, our living room talk this week. Man, welcome to our living room. I love this. I know. I do too. It's my favorite night of the week. I like that. I'm favorite night of the week. I'm trying to share this. This is what happens in our living room, and you should, if it happens in your living room, it's pretty cool too. You know, just, you just sit down and talk, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's valuable. I think sometimes we, we miss <coughs> out on this um, because, well, we just, we just do. Yeah. Um, we just don't take, let me share this real quick. Watch party. I don't do, want to do a watch party because I want to see this. I'm just going to share it. Okay. Right post. There you go. <laughs> so the reason is, you know, I just think we don't take enough time where we quiet everything else and just have discussions. Like, I think we take for granted that people are going to be tough enough to work through certain things. Oh, yeah. And... <clears throat> and sometimes there are people that just aren't willing to have the conversation. Yeah. I've noticed that a lot in um, different conversations that I have initiated with people where I say, hey, I feel this way about this subject. And they'll say, you know, I found myself feeling that way too. I just didn't know if I could talk about it. So, you know, whether it be like awkwardness in trying to cultivate community or just saying, you know, I don't feel comfortable with this whatever it is so whatever the subject is but I'm always the one that's just willing to talk about it I just I would rather put it all out there on the table just call it out you know put it there and there are there are times and places to do that for sure but you know this is the living room it should be one of those safe places that you have to be able sure. to talk and absolutely and I just yeah. believe you know we um, we believe in cultivating community Mm -hmm. And what better place to cultivate community <coughs> than in your living room? Yeah, totally. Just in conversation. I think we don't often enough break down the programs and the, and the processes and the, and the exactness to be human. Yeah. I think a lot of times we miss out, especially in, in our church culture, mm -hmm. we miss out on the opportunity of just being raw. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. Oh, yeah, no. And 
this week we're talking about faith. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it earlier. And faith waxes and wanes like the moon, right? It <laughs> yeah. ebbs and flows like the tide. Yeah. There are times in your life that if we're honest, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. There's times in my life that I've felt like and probably exercised my faith far more than some other times in my life. True. Yeah. Um, there's times in my life that if I was honest, I was just going through the motions of life. And it wasn't about yep. my, my faith and my trust was in my routine. Yes. And my function and and it might not have been easy, but it was comfortable. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we miss that sometimes. <clears throat> and I think, I hope that when you, when you read or hear that we're talking about faith today, that you don't go, oh, here's another conversation about why you should have more faith. Well, really, the conversation is what is faith and why does it matter? Yeah. And, um, I don't know. Well, I thought it was neat because, like, for me, my personal experience today, I know, knowing we were going to talk about this subject tonight, um, I had a good friend post, she shared a post that her mom had made where the Lord was really just impressing upon her the scripture in Matthew where it talks about having faith the size of a mustard seed. Yeah. And she said, you know, a mustard seed is tiny. I mean, it's like a speck of dirt. And she said, you know, there are times that I have faith that's ginormous. And then there are other times that I think I should have that and I just don't. But do I have a speck of dirt faith? And she was like, yes, I have that. And the Lord is saying, you know, with this much faith, you can say to that mountain, jump into the sea and it will do that. But I think because we can't physically, am I going, am I stepping on what no, you were going to say? Can I see your phone? Sure. I'm doing something. I think because we physically can't see things, we go, well, because I told Kirk one time years ago, I was like, we lived in Colorado at the time. And I said, Go ahead. Oh, no, keep on your oh, okay. story. I said, if I actually look at Pike's Peak and tell it to jump into the sea, is it is it going to do that? Yeah. And honestly, it could. Sure. If Absolutely. I had faith that it would. So that's what I just posted as you and posted as me. I posted this question, what is faith? So if you're watching right now, if you're... Uh, tagging along. I want you to, to look at that and, and give us a quick answer. Yeah. A simple answer, as simple as you can make it. What is faith? And then I want to I want to kind of have a little bit of a of a back and forth. More conversation. In that yeah. a, a, a conversation because I believe <coughs> in our community, in in our connectedness. Yeah. That we're going to help each other recognize what is faith and. And I'm not here to judge whatever your answer is. Has anybody answered you? No. Well, let's see. So we'll we'll wait as we talk about we can go back to faith, it, and we'll we'll come back to it as well. Now, my pastoral answer on what is faith is in Hebrews 11. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, and the substance of things not seen. But I always say. Can you break that down for me? Sure. Because, like, those are, the way those words are put together, it's not how I speak. So I need, yeah. sorry, I just touched that microphone. It's, I need it to, what is it right now? Like, what is faith? Well, and that's what I think is really interesting. Because I, I too, like to, I like to break things down. I like to simplify things because I am a simple thing. <coughs> <laughs> I I like complex things, but I like to break them down so that I understand them. Because if I don't understand them, it's I I'm can, not, you can't teach about. I'm them not for able sure. to teach, and um, so faith. If you look oh, in the dictionary and you try to hunt down what does faith mean, yeah, 
the first word, and actually in the dictionary that I looked in, is trust. Kay. So I love associating faith with trust. It's it's complete trust, but and there's a lot of other words that come along with it: optimism, um, belief, uh, all of these different things. But trust was all capitalized. Really? Yeah. It was really kind of an interesting hmm. thing. Um, so when it comes to trust... I'm like moving all over the place. When it's it my comes, living room. i got to get comfortable. That's fine. <laughs> my couch. But when it comes to faith, when it comes to <coughs> trusting things, how hard is it to keep trusting things? Well, I think that that is fluid because I say fluid. I don't know. Maybe that's not the right word, but maybe it is. I trust that the couch is holding me up. I trust that, you know, the floor is stable. I trust that the door will lock when I press the button or turn the key. Yep. I trust that the water comes on. And when it doesn't, I go, <gasps> something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. Yeah. But there are so many things like I just looking like that shelf. I trust that the hardware is going to hold it up or, right. you know, that the light's going to stay on because it's doing what it's supposed to do. And that's, I think, an important piece because, like, for me, one of my favorite examples of how to, how to recognize what is faith, um, one of the best ways to recognize that is the brakes on a car. Oh, totally, yeah. I mean, unless, unless you inspect your brakes... <laughs> Every time, <laughs> Every time before no. you leave. TJ, do you do you check your brakes? Never. Test your, I mean, no. unless you take apart your car, inspect right. everything, put it back together every day before <clears throat> you head out the door or, or, or on your way, mm -hmm. you don't see your brakes working, but they've proven that they will work. Yeah. And before you started driving, someone told you, hey, this is the brake pedal, that's how you stop. All that being said, our timer went off on our, on our camera and flipped back. Every time. Did it work? Okay, so, but that being said, if you feel like you're approaching a stop sign too fast and you're in the passenger seat, you stress out. We do that riding with Nicholas. Most of the time, he's pretty good. But there's sometimes he, he's approaching a stop sign, and we feel like he's approaching too fast. Uh, yeah. He needs to slow down. Well, backing out of the driveway stresses me out. <laughs> yeah. I'm good with backing out of the driveway, though. But, so, know. anyway. So, faith <clears throat> really comes down to trust. Do I trust? And, and so... Spiritually, it's do I trust God? Mm -hmm. And honestly, like I said before, it waxes and wanes. It ebbs and flows. Yeah. There are some instances, some moments that I trust God so much. And there are other moments and, and other situations where I struggle with trusting God because I think I have a good solution. Most of the time, honestly, most of the time... It's in my strengths where I struggle with trusting God and in my weakness where I mm. don't. Yeah. I agree with that. For myself, too, not just you. Do you have any more you'd like to add? Oh. No, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still taking you in right now. Like I'll, I'll, I know I'll have something when it comes. I'll and so when, when Hebrews says that faith is the substance of what we hope for, and the evidence of what we cannot see. It means, are we willing to keep doing what we believe and trust that is right, even when the outcome that we see isn't what we expected? Let me say that again. Yeah. Are we willing to continue forward, continue 
doing what we believe is right, even potentially know for sure is right, in spite of the results that we see with our eyes. This is a challenging place. You know, let's, yeah. I mean, we're going to be extremely transparent right now. We don't have all of the, hey, we've been there, we've done that. I mean, okay, maybe we do. When we, when we first moved to Colorado, we were broke. Like. <laughs> we used everything we had we, to get there. When I say, and that was it. When I say broke, <laughs> I mean we were broken people. Yeah. We were we were out of money, out of resources. Yeah. Um we we were we were at a, we were at our end. I would say in that time looking back, our faith was as strong as it had ever been. Because instead of running, instead of trying to manipulate and come up with different plans, we didn't know any better than to just do what we could during the day, yeah. put the kids to bed, and turn on some worship music <laughs> and cry and <laughs> lay in the floor and cry out to God and trust that he was going to make a difference. Yeah. Even though day would stack upon day would stack upon day, and we wouldn't know what we didn't know what the next day held. We didn't know how the next bill that was going to be due was going to be paid. We didn't know. Um, but we believed we were in the right position. Right, yeah. And, and so, w in terms of faith, we, we were able to live out acting, trusting, that there was a breakthrough coming, that God had sent us there, that we were there on purpose. We mm -hmm. were able to live that out without giving up, regardless of the fact that our present situation that we found ourselves in said, hey, it's time to go home. Yeah, you're failing. Yeah. Well, and we even had family members that said, it's okay if you come back. Yeah. And we had to come, like, as soon as we moved there, there's a lot that happened, but he went on a mission trip to Ukraine. And this time of the year is always really hard for me because, well, it's not hard for me. It was hard for me that year because t like July 1st is Sawyer's birthday. Then the 4th of July, our family has always gotten together to celebrate because everybody's off work. We all come together. It's summertime. It's so much fun. And then Kirk and his twin brother have a birthday July 5th. So it's always just this big celebration. And well, I was in Ukraine. And he was in Ukraine and I was in Colorado by myself. I mean, we'd barely been there four weeks. Yeah. I didn't know anyone. And I just, I was so, <laughs> it was so, I felt so alone and so far away. So my in-laws flew us all back home. I cried the whole time in the airport. I'd never flown with three little people before. I had just people that helped me through that. But um, <clears throat> we were home and I mean, literally had zero money in the bank. Can you remember that? Yeah. Seven dollars. We had when seven dollars in Kirk's pocket whenever he got back from Ukraine. And and we have family members that said, just stay here. We'll go get your stuff. We'll just come back out. home. And we were like, we don't know. Maybe we could. I, I don't know. But everything's there. We've already committed, you know, all these things. We He said, Chelsea, we went to church in Owasso. And he said, Chelsea, I'm going to put this money in the offering. And I said, Kirk, that's all we have left. And he said, well, it's not mine. Anyway, you know, let's just give it to the Lord. Yeah. I mean, literally like. 37 cents in our bank account. I mean, not even joking. We had nothing. He puts the $7. Seven, $7 was like a fortune. It was to us. It, I mean, and it, it just everything. took our breath away to do it. But we were like, okay, we're going to do it. That's fine. The next day we were given 700 And so the Lord just, he and he just kept redeeming and yeah. kept redeeming. And it kept coming back to us. And honestly, faith didn't look like anything except just saying, God, you said this. And I believe that you you are who you say you are and you'll do what you'll say you'll do. Right. And and it wasn't, we couldn't do anything. We couldn't be anything. Right. It was just literally just saying, okay. I mean, we would just walk around in a daze. 
oh my gosh, just remembering this makes me want to cry because we just, we didn't know. We had no answer. And that's what faith looks like. It, mm -hmm. it looks like just continuing to move forward and yeah. just, I don't know. I, there's, I don't know. It's just, it's just crazy how God just took that and out of our obedience, yeah. he began to bless our obedience and not just financially. I mean, he right. provided because he's the provider, but yeah. he, he just blessed our obedience with people who yeah. spoke life into us and just with friendships and well, opportunities and different we things. We were walking as zombies, <coughs> like completely trying to figure everything out and just took our kids to a park, ran into uh, Anna. And Caleb, and, yeah. And then they had us over for dinner and we end up building a great friendship with Anna and Caleb Cole. and. And he just, happened to be from Tulsa. Yeah, like, just a, it's a small world. I mean, stuff. just the way that God orchestrated, continuing to prove to us that He saw us. That where He we were. saw us where yeah. we were. The, everything <coughs> didn't get fixed overnight. We didn't have no more struggles at all. No, we didn't struggle with with trust or frustration or anything. We, it, it, all of that didn't just disappear. Right. Um. But we were able to work through it. We were able to be committed through it. And and realistically, that's what I hear when I read Hebrews 11. Mm -hmm. That faith is continuing to push in the direction of what you know, what you have a deep conviction is right. Yeah. Even if you're not seeing the results that you think you should. And, and I think that is the challenge. That's, there's so many things that can stand in the way of living out faith. Mm -hmm. But I think when we turn our eyes from spiritual things to physical things, yeah. that's the greatest barrier of faith, yeah. in my opinion. I agree, yeah. That when we, when we turn our eyes from seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. When we take that and we say, well, if all these things aren't being added to you, then you're not seeking the kingdom of God and you're not doing those things. It's not an if-then statement. Right. Can I have your Bible? It, it, it doesn't go that way. Right. That's At least it hasn't in my experience. Maybe you're far more godly and, and <laughs> spiritual than me. But in my experience... The statement that Chelsea makes pretty regularly holds true. Out of obedience comes blessing. And that doesn't necessarily mean that all your financial woes will go away. Yeah, this is or, not prosperity gospel. Or, I'm not saying that. Or all your but. relational woes will go away. Because <laughs> right. we still struggle with relationships mm -hmm. personally. I mean, <clears throat> we still have arguments. Shocking, I know. You know, Sunday, let's just be honest. Sunday... We came, we did church. Church was great. The Lord was present and, you know, he really worked through both of us. Sunday afternoon was hard. It was challenging. Pastors, Super. families, they fight. Yeah. It happens, especially on Sunday mornings right before church. Yeah. Every Sunday. Not every <laughs> Sunday, but regularly But Sunday, regularly we're fighting. It's like the stress level somehow between midnight on Saturday and like 7 8 a.m., yeah. 7 38 on Sunday. It's like it's it ratchets up like triples. It's stupid. And so Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Sunday afternoon was hard. And was we tough. just, there were things that, but I mean, if you go back through, we've shared lots of videos, but we talk about fighting. Yeah. The fight matters. And we truly stand behind that. And so Sunday, we kept pressing into the conversation. Yeah because it was uncomfortable, I was mad, I was crying, he was frustrated, he misunderstanding me. I mean, just because we're human and we just had our own thoughts and then you get alone in your thoughts and then you, you're thinking, well, they must be thinking this and it's so far from the truth. So it's, right. a, it's about pressing into each other and just talking it out. But, yeah. you know, so there's still, there are struggles that are still happening. We have not perfected this. Right. But these subjects just keep coming to mind and we want to just share our experience with them yeah. with everyone else but 
yeah, definitely. We're not at the finish line or anything, for sure. Yeah. And so <coughs> we, we asked the question earlier, what is faith? And I think it's important to look at what, what that process looks like, what it feels like. Because honestly, in, in, your, in your walk of faith, in your action steps, when, when you're following after God, when you're moving in the direction that you believe that you're supposed to move in. I mean, we've done business startups. We've done new jobs. Yeah. We've done moving cross country. We've done a lot of different things. And honestly, every one of them, every time we've had we've come to a position of having to make a decision is this worth it are we gonna is it worth it to continue doing this or is it time to to look at something else yeah i mean we were we've been at that place in ministry we've been at that place in jobs mm -hmm. we've been at that place relationally <coughs> we've been at that place uh, i mean in in all kinds of different ways Right, yeah. mm -hmm. and you have to decide what's at the at the bare minimum. You have to decide what's the right direction to go. Yeah. Because if you're if you're just wandering, then what faith looks like doesn't mean anything to you. Right. If you're just going through the motions and just doing what's comfortable you need to watch last week's video on convenience but if you're intentionally moving in a direction of success of faith of of some type of significance it's going to be challenging and you have to have a basic determination of whether you're doing what is right or not mm-hmm and the difference is even if the results don't look like what you want them to yet, are you willing to stay with it? Right. Or, and this is going to be probably an uncomfortable statement, or are you going to let your ego and your pride keep you from doing what's right? Because it's results driven. That's right. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Because the results don't define you. No. The obedience does. I mean, Oof. far too far too often we get our value driven by what the results are. Yeah. I mean, as pastors, it's it's easy for us. Even <clears throat> when we first started doing online stuff. When we first had to deal with all the COVID-19 stuff and not being able to meet in person, it was easy to continue to go back and look at, oh, we had, I mean, we had 700 people watch this video. And then go and look at how many people had watched a video at a different church or another. I mean, all that is is pride and ego. <laughs> totally. That's all it is. I mean, if, if, if our, if the value of the declaration of the gospel is based on, for a pastor, is based on how many people are showing up, then we have missed the mark. Right. We're, then at some point, we're going to be disappointed. At some point, we're going to have an identity crisis because, well, well, now... If, if I'm defined by how many people are showing up and that's my value and that's my, well then, you know what, what happens when COVID-19 is trailing off and we're <coughs> getting back to meeting in person and half the people aren't showing back up. Right. Now so, I have an identity crisis. Yeah, and so what it looks like for us is it has to be, doesn't matter how many people are in the seats, the seats are there and open. Our, for us, it's the obedience to be here every Sunday right. and do what God has called us to do. For me, it's to lead the worship. For you, it's to bring the word. And and for both of us and our family, it's to love people and love right. the Lord and show them who he is. 
And then it's about the people who are supposed to be in the seats or not. It's about their obedience. That's right. To step out in faith, whether the church has hurt you or, you know, you had a bad experience or, you know, yeah. uh, you know, or maybe something happened in your lifetime and you say, well, it's God's fault. I blame right. the Lord. You know, it's all of that is kind of a wash because you have to walk in obedience and That's say, right. I'm going to say yes to this. It's going to make me uncomfortable. It's going to make me ask hard questions yeah. and answer hard questions and be vulnerable and, and open and honest and have to walk in faith. Yeah. It's easy to live in that day to day, like what we talked about at the very beginning, you know, you get in this comfortable stride of life. And that doesn't mean that you're in the wrong place. That doesn't mean you're not necessarily living by faith, but you get into this comfortable stride of life. And then if something jars you, you go, oh, I got to get back to that comfort instead of pressing into what God yeah. is asking you to do. So, you know, our obedience, our measure has to come, everyone's measure has to come from their obedience to the Lord right. and, and how they're walking in obedience to him and what he has asked each individual to do. Well, and I think that's why it's important that the baseline is, do you, are you comfortable emotionally, personally, mm -hmm. are you convinced that you are doing the right thing, that yeah. you are in the right place doing the right thing? Yeah. Because if, if for some reason your response to that question is, well, I don't know, mm -hmm. or no. I'm, I'm supposed to be doing something else. Well, then it's time to do that something else. Right. And you're, and, and I know for me, for me, I was, I was in car sales. I was r pretty good at it. I thought, you know, you were really good at it. And, uh, I mean, I made a good living for my family. And because of that prosperity, I justified not and and put off <laughs> I forgot about that. I put off <laughs> not being faithful. And so if I had if if I back then I mean how long ago was that? Lauren is Lauren's 12. twelve. So it was almost, twelve years ago. Yeah, almost thirteen. Basically. Um <laughs> if you had asked me at that time, was I doing the right thing? I would have him hawed around and eventually got around to, yeah, yeah, I think I'm doing the right thing. But the reality was I had found a place where I, I was making as much money as I had ever made and I was justifying continuing down that path and not. Well, we were comfortable. That's right. It and it's, it's not that that job was not the right job. That's right. But when the Lord began to call you to something else and you said, no, 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 this is where I am. I could have used the resources that I was being given mm -hmm. to have <clears throat> prepared myself for the next step and done the right thing to prepare myself for the next step, knowing that doing car sales was temporary. Right. It wasn't going to be forever. But instead... But instead... I continued to put it off and justify why it wasn't convenient. No, I shouldn't do that. No, I can't do that. I can't afford to do that. So then, you know, I got put in a position where that all that, all of that was taken away. I mean, honestly, we had this conversation. I obviously didn't have a $75,000 a year faith, but... No. I had a $30,000 a year faith. He'd been struggling with it. And the Lord asked him, do you have a $75,000 a year faith? And he said, no, Lord, I don't. And he told me that. Yeah. He was having this this struggle back and forth with the Lord. Because and, that's and what I was going to have to walk away from. He would have to walk away from that job, that Willingly. security. Yeah. And so then the general manager of that particular um, dealership was like, hey, you're making too much money. Now you're going to be at $30,000 a year. Practically. Well, it may have been For actually this, a little bit less or yeah, something. Yeah, if you do all the same stuff. But <clears throat> he, still doing the same job. And he was like, Chelsea, I'm going to walk away from the dealership. I'm leaving. And I said, what end. changed? And he was like, well, they basically took all this money away from me. So I was like, oh, God did that. Okay, got it. <laughs> so, 
So that's why that question has to be the baseline. Yeah. The question of, is what you're doing right now, is it the right thing? And I can't answer that question for you. No. Yeah. You can text me all you want and say, hey, am I doing the right thing? I, I don't know. Yeah. I love the statement from Gene Edwards in uh, A Tale of Three Kings. Mm -hmm. It's a great book. It, it asks the question, is, is a person of the order of, of Saul or the order of David? And you should read that. Um, I won't get into all that. But it asks the question, it says, is this person of the order of Saul or are they of the order of David? A tyrant or a weeper, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Only God knows right. and he's not telling. Yeah. But when it comes to right or wrong, whether you're doing the right thing or not the right thing, yeah. God does know and he is willing to show you and communicate with you, but you have to listen. You have to stop and hear him if you have questions about it. If you have no questions about it and you believe and you are convinced and, and have a deep conviction that you're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. then the results of what you're doing, physical results of what you're doing, are invalid. Right. They don't mean squat. You could be doing the wrong thing in ministry, in life. You could be doing the wrong thing, getting all of the right results, but still be doing the wrong thing. Yeah. I mean, we as, as pastors could be pastoring a church, working in a community that we're not supposed to work in and see hundreds of people lined up to be in the door. To be coming in the door <clears throat> and still be in the wrong place. Right. Material success is not the measure of what it means to be faithful. So faith is not the evidence of what we can see. It is not the results of what we're doing and it's not the tangible results. It is the evidence of what we cannot see. The substance of what we hope for. What we believe is going to happen. So we press that brake, believing that this car is going to stop. Mm -hmm. We continue faithfully trusting God personally. We continue faithfully trusting God, declaring His Word, believing that the work that we're doing is going to impact you. Right. To help you to understand what it looks like to follow after God and to continue doing it regardless of whether or not you get any or an abundance of physical financial return. Well, and I think it's important to point back to the Hebrews chapter 11 because they say, you know, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Moses, by faith, Enoch, by faith, all these people that they list. But then it goes on to say about how, I'll find it right here. It goes on to say that these all died in faith, not having received, this is verse 13, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Yeah. You know, by faith, all of these people did all of these things, you know, these giants, we want to call them giants of the faith, you know, these, these saints and these people that we look up to, these stories that we've read and we go, oh, you know, Abraham did this or Moses did this or whatever, but they, they died not seeing the end result of the faith that they lived out. And I think it's, I think it's interesting, you know, <clears throat> they list off Enoch and, and Noah and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Joseph names them all here. Moses talking about all these things. And here's what's really crazy. And talks about Rahab. Talks about the walls of Jericho falling. And what more shall I say, verse 32. For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the powers of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, and put foreign armies to flight. 
Women receive back their dead by resurrection. Now listen to this. Faith is what we're talking about. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered, suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy. Wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth, and all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God has provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. So in all the stories of superhero movies, where everything looks bleak, and like it's about to fall apart, and then all of a sudden, the superheroes win the day. There are just as many, or a multitude more, really, stories of believers who decided and were committed to, even if this cost me my life, even if this cost me my livelihood, I'm unwilling to compromise because I know yeah. whom I have believed in and I am persuaded, I am convicted, convinced of the fact that he is able to keep his commitment. And that commitment is that you may die physically, but you will not die spiritually and eternally. Right. And so faith is the sub evidence, the substance of what we hope for, the evidence of what we cannot see. And so we have to choose. I love when it does that. That means we've been on here for too long, probably. <laughs> probably. But it is the <coughs> substance of what we hope for. And so if our faithfulness, if our following after Jesus, going after Him, if it's not defined by trusting Him, believing Him, and following Him, regardless of what... Yeah the results say then it's time for us to repent right. and push after him because faith is about trust complete trust and it's only our selfishness and our ego that gets in the way when we start counting faithfulness by reward and so it is our mission and our purpose to continue forward as much as it depends on us regardless of what the outward results may look like. Yeah. That's good. That's faith. Yep. That's what faith is. That's what it looks like. That's why we continue on. Yeah. And the reason we have these conversations with you all is because we have these conversations with each other yeah. <laughs> about, you know, are we doing the right thing? We're not, we're not seeing the results that we want to yeah. see. And so that's what leads us into this conversation of, well, okay, well, we may not be seeing the results, but is that what faith is about? And so that's what spurred this all on. But yeah, I don't know. We're going to continue being here, doing this um, every Wednesday at 630-ish. <laughs> It always varies. Um, I, tonight I, we were good, though, I thought. I'm throwing in a comment. Oh, he's a throwing question. in a comment. Um, will, will trust define your days moving forward? 
And if you would say, yes, I want faith. I want trusting God to define my days moving forward. Just say yes. Yeah. Just put yes. Don't be afraid of being publicly making a declaration that you want to follow Jesus. Yeah. TJ and I kind of talked about this last week. Is it us talking about this last week? About we we invite people to make uh, to accept Jesus. Just text this number. Everybody's head bowed. Everybody's eyes closed. Let's bring the lights down so nobody can see. That's you. Just slip your hand up and slip your hand right back down. Listen, guys. The next step that they call you to is make a public declaration of faith. So we've gone from hiding this secret <laughs> decision to, yeah. hey, the next step is baptism, making a public declaration. So don't be scared of what it means to follow Jesus. Right. Don't be scared of, the, uh, of, the, of what other people can <clears throat> do. Trust in Him. If you want your life right. and your days defined by trusting Jesus and following after Him every day, just say yes. Yeah. Don't be scared of it. Just say yes. Let other people see and let your light shine before men so that you can make much of who Jesus is and point them in the direction of him. You don't have to be perfect to follow Jesus. Yeah. So just say yes in the chat, in the, in the comments. If you want trust to define your days moving forward, just say yes. Yeah, that's good. Um, if you guys are close and available on Wednesdays at 6.30. We have chairs in here. We would love to have this conversation chairs. in our living room with you guys. This is at the church, our living room. This is our living room area at the church, though, where we can just sit down and be comfortable. And um, yeah, so if you guys are available, kids can run around. We don't care. Our kids are at home. Yeah. But um, yeah, we have play spaces for them to come. But if you want to join the conversation, if you want to be here, um, and be part of this. We would love to have you. Wednesdays at 6.30, we'll be here. Yeah. Um, but we'll be back again on Sunday at 10.30 and um, celebrating the 4th of July. It'll be the 5th of July at that point, but um, gonna do a little patriotic, uh, what am I trying to say, uh, segment in there, you sure. know, just honoring the country and um, our freedoms and all that. So we will see you back here Sunday at 10.30 and we hope that you have a great rest of the week. You wanna pray before we go? And I will pray and then we'll say goodbye. <laughs> God, we love you and we thank you for this moment together, Lord, to be really convicted by your spirit and, um, and by your word, Father, where you have said, you know, you've, you've lined it all out for us and um, all we have to do is just seek you and find you and know you, Lord. And God, we just thank you for conversation and being able to hold each other accountable and to know that, um, we may have a thought about something, Lord, but you've given wisdom to someone else and direction to someone else. So we just thank you for community that we get to live in. God, I just pray that those who have watched or who will watch later that will see this, Lord, as, as they hear this prayer, Lord, I just pray that their faith would be even just the size of a speck of dirt, that mustard seed, that they would just continue to take the next step forward because out of obedience comes the blessing of the Lord yes. where his face will shine upon you. And a thousand generations, you know, there are blessings upon you as you listen to this. And so I just, I just pray that you would have the faith to continue moving forward or the faith to speak out or the faith to um, just take that next step, whatever that is, Lord, or whatever that looks like for you. And so, Lord, we just, we thank you for this time together and we love you, we honor you, and, and we, we just want to live our days for you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you guys on Sunday.